the two Disney resorts in the United States both have different Fast Pass systems. Disneyland has Max Pass, while Disney World has Fast Pass Plus. So, what's the differences? Which is better? So both Disney resorts have a neat system that's generally free to use if you want to go free for guests to be able to skip the regular standby lines. Walt Disney World in the last few years has put in a system called FastPass Plus where you can book your Fast Passes online. You can book them 30, 60, or even more days ahead of time if you want to pay for it. 30 days ahead if you are staying off Disney property. 60 days ahead of time if you're staying on Disney property. You can book up to three at a time for each day ahead of time. And then once you've used those three fast passes for that day, you can then book more through the course of the day using the app on your phone. This allows you to plan out your days ahead of time. So two months ahead of time, you can know what rides you're gonna be doing and when you're gonna be doing them. It does create some issues though, where if you're able to book 60 days ahead of time, you have a much greater chance to be able to get the rides that are in demand, like Flight of Passage and Slinky Dog and Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. However, if you can't book 60 days in advance, because say you're not staying on Disney property or something comes up and you can't be sitting at your computer that day, you have a much lower chance of being able to get those rides and have to keep hoping that maybe an opening will happen for them, but it kind of leaves you stuck if you're not staying on property. Walt Disney World also has a lot more rides and attractions percentage-wise with FastPass on it, which means a lot more of them are impacted by the people that are using FastPass to kind of bypass the line. And it has definitely changed how the weights are. Disneyland, on the other hand, you cannot book a FastPass using the MaxPass until you are in the park. If you want to go free, you have to go to the ride itself put your tickets into the machine or scan your phone with the tickets and then get your fast pass that way. Or if you pay $15 to Disneyland, then you can start booking your fast passes as soon as you walk into the park. You can't do it ahead of time. You got to be in the park. Now it is kind of cool because in Disneyland, you can actually be in Disneyland itself and book a fast pass for California Adventure or vice versa. As soon as you've entered one of the parks, you can immediately start booking fast passes for both. You can only have one at a time and you can't book a second one or a third or fourth until after you have used the one you currently have. But as soon as you get in line and have checked in with that fast pass, you can open up your app if you've paid for the max pass on your phone and you can immediately book another ride that way. It can work pretty quickly and you can start piling up a pretty good string of fast passes. Fast pass, however, at Disneyland is not available on anywhere near as many rides. It's not available at any of the shows. You have a slightly smaller choice to pick from, although between the two parks there's a pretty long list, and not anywhere near as many rides are impacted by it. So the other similarity between the two is both of them, you can use your phone. You can open up the Disney app on your phone and it will immediately open up and then from there you can actually start booking your fast passes right on the phone. For Disneyland, Max Pass costs $15 a day per person to be able to use your phone to book them. However, that also includes all of your photo pass photos as well, which is actually a pretty good deal depending upon how big your group is. After using this at Disneyland, it was an amazingly wonderful thing to be able to do, especially when our group split up. We were all kind of able to do our own thing and book fast passes as we wanted to. So how does it impact your vacation? How does it impact the parks? If you're going to go to Walt Disney World, you're going to use FastPass Plus, you really have to be able to book those Fast Passes ahead of time. If you're able to book at 60 days, really, if you want the big in-demand rides, it means getting up early that morning to try to be able to book them and hope you can grab them before they're gone. If you're booking 30 days ahead of time, you're probably not going to have as much luck, but you're still trying to book all of your Fast Passes ahead of time. And I have actually done a whole video on tricks and tips to be able to help you get the most out of Fast Pass Plus. So so that should help but it does mean you're really kind of much more stuck and rigid even down to which park you go to on which day and what ride you're going to and it means you've got to do a whole lot more advanced planning if you're like me i like to kind of wander and see what comes up and fast pass plus doesn't make that harder the other thing that fast pass plus has done at walt disney world is it has made almost every single standby line longer it has taken lines that used to go quickly 
and made them much longer in length. I use a couple examples from the last couple trips I went on where Rock and Roller Coaster had a standby line that used to have been in length, it was about a 20 minute line. But because of Fast Pass, and there were actually more people in the Fast Pass line than there were in the standby line, that 20 minute line took an hour and a half. Meanwhile, the Fast Pass still took about 45 minutes or more just because there were so many people in it and that's all that was feeding and it did not work well. Another example is Space Mountain. When we went to the uh, Not So Scary Halloween Party, the line for Space Mountain was inside the building the whole time during the day and that standby line ran 60 to 90 minutes all day long because the Fast Pass line was slowing it down. However, as soon as the party started, once they quit allowing any fast passes in, the standby line for Space Mountain grew. I mean, it came all the way out almost to the people mover. It looked like this hugely long line. And yet that line that was probably three to four times longer than what it had been during the day was only taking about 30 minutes to be able to get people in the ride and on it. Much longer line, but moving a whole lot faster because fast pass wasn't killing it. Walt Disney World tends to give a lot more fast passes per ride than Disneyland does. The percentages, depending upon the ride, seem to be anywhere from 5 to 10 fast pass riders for every standby rider, and it's just killed your standby line. If you can't be getting fast passes, you're just not going to be able to do as much at Walt Disney World because the lines are too long if you don't have it. Disneyland, on the other hand, doesn't have anywhere near the large percentage of rides that have fast pass. There's a lot of them that still do not. Pirates of the Caribbean. At Disneyland does not have fast pass. At Walt Disney World, it does. Standby lines at the Walt Disney World are now much longer than the ones at Disneyland because of fast pass. Pirates of the Caribbean is a huge people eater. It can put so many people on, but the fast pass has slowed down that line so much at Walt Disney World, where at Disneyland, we were actually in a pretty long line for it at one point and we still moved through and got on pretty quickly. It makes a big difference in that. That's typical of a number of the different rides at Disneyland. There are a lot of them that they don't have fast pass on and so you don't have it slowing down the regular standby line. So those lines just move much quicker and they can actually, they at least feel like they're feeding more people in because they're not getting slowed down by all the other people that are bypassing the line and making the people in line wait. It, it actually works much more efficiently, you're able to do a lot more at Disneyland. The other thing that we really liked was we didn't have to plan our days two months ahead of time. We could walk in the park, we could look at the wait times, we could look at the phone app and see what fast pass is available and say, okay, where do we want to go? What do we want to do? Does this work with our time? And it allowed us to be much more spontaneous. It made it much easier for us. In fact, as a group of five, you know what? Two of us want to go over there and do that. Three of us want to go over here and do this. As opposed to being locked in all together because we had booked our fast passes months ahead of time. It allowed us a lot more flexibility that way. And we had a great time splitting up and doing different things because the Max Pass allowed us to do that. It also is a much fairer system at Disneyland because your most popular rides aren't going to be booked out before you even get in the park. As soon as you walk in the park, you can immediately start choosing the popular rides. And even on the busiest day that we were there, the popular rides had fast passes available all the way up through early afternoon or so. At that point, they were scheduling times for late in the day. And so if you booked it early afternoon, that was all you were going to get. But it still made it possible for anybody to be able to book that fast pass. Whereas at Walt Disney World, that doesn't happen. Unless you're sitting there with your phone in the hand all day going, Come on, come on, reload, give me fast pass. Come on, biggie, fast pass. I'm sorry, I'm not into gambling. We found the system at Disneyland far easier to use, far more fair. The number of people getting onto the rides through FastPass at Disneyland was much more limited, which means it didn't impact the standby lines anywhere near as much. With a couple exceptions, Radiator Springs Racer had a percentage just going much more like Walt Disney World, and it was very noticeable on how it killed the standby line. If they had given out a much smaller percentage of fast passes on Radiator Springs Racers, you would not see the huge wait times because that line would move much faster. It's fast pass that's killing the wait time on Radiator Springs Racers. And you can stand there in line and, and just see it. It's bad. But that's the unusual one at Disneyland. Most of the rides don't run anywhere near that percentage of fast pass. 
and it it made it much nicer and much easier to be able to use it was wonderful to be able to be spontaneous and even on the couple really busy days that we were there the lines were still manageable because fast pass hadn't killed them so overall between the two systems i much prefer disneyland's max pass Walt Disney World, it's very cool to have the Magic Bands, to be able to wear that and use that for everything. We found at Disneyland, most of the same stuff that's on here was actually on the phone. We could have our park tickets on the phone. We had our Fast Passes on the phone. We'd scan that to get into the lines. So our phones kind of filled in for this in a lot of ways. No charging to your room because the Disneyland resorts are small and most people aren't staying at it. But that was the biggest difference. At Disneyland, this was this. And it worked very well that way. In fact, actually, Disneyland, I actually had all of our park tickets on my phone. One morning when my daughter had forgotten her ticket or couldn't find it or one of us had it, I don't remember what, I was able to walk up to the front of the park and scan her in and didn't have to worry about her ticket. So that actually worked even a little bit better. <laughs> but we found that the Disneyland system of MaxPass was much easier. It was nice to not have to stress over whether we had booked all our Fast Passes ahead of time, whether we were sticking to that schedule. There were a couple times that we had a Fast Pass booked and we realized that we were gonna be doing something else. Ah, uh, it's okay. Once it expires, I'll book another one, no big deal. And we were able to use it far more efficiently and to be able to do a lot more with it than would have been possible at Walt Disney World. It allowed a lot more spontaneity. It allowed us to ride a lot more because the standby lines were much shorter. Overall, Max Pass at Disneyland is a much, much better system than Fast Pass Plus at Walt Disney World. For us, in our mind, it was well worth the $15 each absolutely and we didn't have a problem with that especially when we started adding in our photo pass photos that was also really nice that everybody was able to download their photo pass photos on their own phones and get their own pictures that way even where walt disney world's photo pass system you have to share the photos basically only one person can have everybody's and it's a little bit more complicated max pass actually worked much better even with that at Disneyland, than Walt Disney World system did. We love that it kept the standby lines moving because the percentages weren't as big. We love that there were a lot of rides that did not have Fast Pass, which meant that they weren't slowed down because of all that. We like the percentages that they were doing. Really, Max Pass has a lot in common with what Disney World system used to be before they went to Fast Pass Plus, and it's just been digitalized. So overall, I really like Max Pass. I wish that Disney World would bring Max Pass over there. It could be adapted to use the Magic Bands. It's a better system. I really wish that they would do that. Maybe not necessarily put kiosks out. I think Disneyland is now going to a few centralized kiosks instead of ones at each ride. And that works great. Uh, Walt Disney World already has that. But I would love to see Max Pass go to Walt Disney World and Fast Pass Plus scrapped because it's just not a good system. What are your thoughts about Max Pass and Fast Pass Plus? I'd love to hear it. Did I miss some obvious details? Let me know. Am I missing something? Do you agree or disagree with me? Do you like Fast Pass Plus better than Max Pass? I don't know why you would, but I'd like to know why. If you do, please share it in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Check the description. Tons of information there with websites, equipment, merchandise, and more. Thank you also to my patrons for supporting me. My patrons rock, and they allow me to do so much on this channel that I couldn't do otherwise. If you want to know more about Patreon and the perks that come with it, check the link in the description below or at the end of the video. Thank you so very much and God bless. Disneyland has Max Pass Plus, while Disney World has Fast... Oh, that's not right. The two... <laughs> yeah. The two Disney parks... Parks. You have a much lower chance of begin of beginning. You can open up the Disney app and immediately Oh my gosh. Stop it. <laughs> Wrong app. He and sitting there on your phone the whole time going, come on, come on, come on, let me have one guy beat us fast fast. Oh gosh. If you'd like to know about my merchandise, fan pages, and more, be sure to check the description below. If you'd like to know whenever I've got a new video posted, well, make sure you hit that button right up there and subscribe. If you'd like to watch another one of my videos, I've got a great one for you right here. And if you'd like to be like these wonderful people here and support me financially on Patreon, well, make sure you check the link right there. There's even some extra perks for them. Thank you so much and God bless.